you been given any assurances from ownership about your job status for the rest of the season? Yeah, my focus is on getting ready for the Colts. Do you personally believe that you could be coaching for your job this week against the Colts? I'm going to control what I can control. I'm going to get ready for the Colts. <laughs> Classic. All right. So, listen, that was that was Bill Belichick earlier. Uh, after after his uh, loss to the, the Patriots, loss to the Commanders, they're asking Bill <laughs> Belichick about his job security. And I, and I go back to Mike Hill the first time. I'm going to tell you the first time I saw Rodney Harrison. I don't know if he remembers mm-hmm. this. It was March. It was March of 2003. It was New England, so it was cold. It was cold outside. Mm-hmm. March 2003, I see Rodney Harrison wearing some shorts in cold New England weather in Foxborough in the facility. They had convinced him to sign. You're about to go sign with who? Denver? You're about to sign with, with Denver? And, well, the Raiders. Oh, the Raiders. And then Denver. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So they can, he was on his way. He's wearing shorts. It's like 35 degrees outside. He signs with the Patriots and the rest is history, a captain, a Super Bowl champion. Yeah. But I, I bring that up, Rodney, because could you think that in 2003, you know how things were in New England. Did you ever think that you would witness this scene at Gillette Stadium where Bill Belichick is being asked about his job security and the Patriots are sitting here in November at two and seven? <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> and it just shows you how important the quarterback position is. Um, mm. And we've all known that Tom is the greatest of all time. But to have a guy like Mac, who I thought was going to come in and and really be that pro and, and really elevate his game to be that starting quarterback for the next decade or so, I thought he was going to be that guy. And it just hasn't worked out that way. So do you think you Mac think Jones a- is the... Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead Mike. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, do you, is Mac Jones the only issue there in New England? And is it even fair that the media is even asking Bill Belichick these kind of questions when you consider his pedigree, his resume, and if you look at the NBA, uh, a coach like Greg Popovich is going through the same thing with our guys like Tim Duncan and Tony Parker, and nobody's even questioning anything about his job. Well, I just think with um, Coach Belichick, he understands that this is a production-based business. And if you're not producing, if you're not winning, then, you know, you're going to get judged. It's no different than a coach um, comes in, he looks at his players, he looks at his roster, and he sees, and he says, you know what, we got to move this guy, we got to cut this guy. The same thing has to happen with coaches. You got to have guys that are responsible. Coach Belichick has not forgotten how to coach. The problem with Coach Belichick is he didn't get enough good players. The players out there, I don't know if he's trying to build a team um, you know, a, 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 the type of team that we had, but this is 2023. The rules have changed. Things mm-hmm. are a lot different. And he just has not been able to get those really star players. You look at the wide receiver quality. They don't have a number one receiver. They don't have a number mm-hmm. one receiver. You have an opportunity to go out and get a guy you spent 11 million on Juju Smith-Schuster. You should have kept Jacoby Brissett. That was easy. You know what I mean? So it's it's those type of decisions that you make on top of not having that consistency on the at the quarterback position, but also guys on the defensive side of the ball getting hurt. Matthew Judon, Christian Gonzalez. It's just a it's just a just a bonanza of things, guys. Mm-hmm. Here, here, here's my uh, final Patriots question before we ask you about other things. Uh, Belichick, if if you're him, do you? <laughs> retire in 2024 do you stay with the Patriots and allow somebody else if they if you have this option allow somebody else to pick the players because there's definitely a talent deficit or as has been speculated do you go to Washington do you go to another team you get your own restart your own rejuvenation the same way Tom Brady did when he left Mm -hmm. New England for Tampa and picked up another Super Bowl what do you think the best option for Belichick is in 2024 you know, Mike, that's a very difficult question because I'm not that man. I'm not I'm not Coach Belichick at his age where he's at in stage and point in time in his life, so I can't really answer that. The bottom line is what Kraft wants to do. Does he feel like Bill is the future? Does he want to start a, a rebuilding process with Bill, or does he want to go in a different direction? 
You know, people have talked about Gerard Mayo possibly having an opportunity, but of course he has some of that Bill Belichick DNA. Or do you want to go outside the locker room and get somebody that's totally different, somebody totally new, um, and and revamp your entire um, you know offensive staff? But the problem is too is you still have to find a quarterback. And from the looks of it, it seems like they're going to be in a good position to be able to draft one. Ronnie, don't you want to ask? Let's move on to the Jets now. Don't you want to ask uh, uh, Robert Sala if he's uh, if he's being held hostage to blink twice, uh, just in case management is trying to force him to start Zach Wilson? Because uh, after saying that he, he's going to plead the fifth when it comes to that, he he kind of backpedaled a little bit and said, you know, me and management are on the same page when it comes to Zach Wilson. I, I don't know what page they're on, but somebody's going to get a page at the end of the season if this continues, and that means a peak slip at the end of the season if it continues with Zach Wilson. Why is it that Zach Wilson is still a starting quarterback, in your opinion, of the New York Jets? Well, I think, you know, obviously he was a, a very high draft choice. And it's somebody that they, they said that they ultimately believed in. But of course, I mean, you go and get a 39 year old quarterback, you pay him 45, 50 million dollars a year. Obviously, you don't believe in the young guy. Um, but I think the most important thing is for them to be able to focus on this week, not the big picture, plan one game. And what does that entail? Running the football, trying to play good defense, trying to get Zach Wilson to a point where you can get the ball out of his hands quick. He can limit his turnovers, and he can play with a little bit more confidence. The guy's a good athlete. He's just young. He's raw, and some of the play calling isn't very exotic. It, it's not like the you know he's dropping back, and he's got two or three options where he can get rid of the football. So I think some of the play calling is hurting him as well, and the fact that you know, everything was basically designed for Aaron Rodgers. Now you look up mm -hmm. and now you got to put Zach Wilson, a young player, to go in there and learn all those um, different things. It's very difficult to do. Uh, Ron, yeah, I, I like your expertise on this because I keep hearing people uh, talk about, I want to talk about some of the coaches in the league. And I hear mm -hmm. this thing now where I hear a lot of folks say, hey, look, if I'm hiring a coach, uh, there's such an offensive minded game. I'm going to find an offensive minded head coach and I disagree with that. I think the position really is a leadership position head coach. You got to be able to lead first mm -hmm. of all. And if you're able to turn your offense over to somebody who can make it run, that's good. But that's part of your responsibility. And I think it's being proven this year. Look at D'Amico Ryan's a defensive guy, a, a former defensive, a defensive player, just like you were, who's mm -hmm. got Houston playing better than anybody expected and CJ Stroud looks great and I know it's only one game but Antonio Pierce linebacker goes into the Raiders and gets them playing inspired. Do you think that <clears throat> defensive coaches uh, in today's game kind of get a bad rap is too strong but do you think people have overstated the importance of having an offensive minded head coach. No, because that's something I've said, you know, if, if I'm paying a quarterback 250 million dollars or $50 million a year, or $40, $50, $50, 55000000 million a year, whatever it is, I want an offensive-minded coach. I want somebody that can work directly with my coach. I want somebody that can, I mean, with my quarterback, that can help him grow, help him build, and help him last. And you look at Brandon Staley. He went over to the Chargers, and he was supposed to be this brilliant defensive mind, and the Chargers have gotten worse on the defensive side of the ball. They're not better. And then who's really working? He had to go outside the locker room, go get Kellen Moore, bring him in. And, you know, the offense has been up and down. So I'm one of those guys. I believe if I'm paying a quarterback that type of money, um, you know, I want my head coach to be an offensive minded coach. What? Well, I even can't though believe you saying that. Yeah. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe that Rodney Harrison is saying this. It's just, Mr. Defense. So how about that? How about my point about leadership? Leadership. What if he's a brilliant offensive mind, but he can't lead anybody? All he can do is just well, you talk, know whisper mm -hmm. to the quarterback, but not no, the rest no. of the team. Mike, I agree with you. Leadership is a huge part of it, absolutely. Because D'Amico Ryan's, he's doing a phenomenal job. Just his calmness, his maturity, the fact that he played, the fact that he played, he walked right in and get 
instant credibility. You know what I mean? The players respect him so much, and the guy's done a wonderful job. These guys are playing at a high level. They're competing, and he's playing with a rookie quarterback. So these are the times where you, you try to make a strong push for the playoffs for the Super Bowl because you got a rookie quarterback on a rookie deal. Fortunately for him, he's got the best rookie quarterback in the league and one of the top quarterbacks in the league right, right now. So now they can go out, they can pay extra people, they can make sure they get more weapons in for C.J. Stroud. I mean, really, this guys he's, he's come in and done such a phenomenal job. You have to consider yeah. him as coach of the year. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and part of the reason is because of C.J. Stroud and what he's been able to do. I mean, he's an exceptional rookie. I saw him at Ohio State. I knew he was going to be good, but I didn't expect him to be this good this soon. What are you seeing out of him that makes him so special, that makes him so brilliant, early in his career? I think it's the poise, man. I mean, you think about these young quarterbacks, they get rattled so easily. And you see him, he's dropping back. He's got guys flying around him, coming around him, trying to sack him, guys at his feet. He's just moving around in the pocket. He's got tremendous fundamentals. He keeps his vision down the field. He sees the entire field. And he's got a rocket as an arm. I mean, the guy is mm -hmm. super accurate. And he's just so poised and so calm. You talk about somebody that's really calm and poised like Tom Brady, that kid is right there. Uh, it, uh, it, would you go so far as to say that he should be in the MVP conversation? I've heard this kind of percolating mm. a little bit. I don't agree with it. They're four and four. I'm an Ohio State mm -hmm. fan through and through. But, uh, but do, do I you understand go, how hard it is to play quarterback in the National Football League and what this young I man don't. is doing? I mean, he's giving his tell, team tell an opportunity. You know, that's the key. Like, I look at the Jets. They're four and four. I look at this team. He's given his team an opportunity. This is the first year under this administration, the head coach, the, you know, the offensive coordinator and everything, and they're bringing this thing together. You, you you give you give them a little time, man. They're going to continue to bring this thing together. I got all the confidence in the world in D'Amico Ryan's and what he's doing and just the success that he's been around. So he knows how to run his team. He knows what he's looking for from a defense perspective. He knows that he wants to be able to run the football like they did in San Francisco. So that's all they're doing week by week. They're continuing to build and continuing to grow. You Nico mentioned those young quarterbacks. Mike. Yeah. Oh, look at you. Uh, shouting them out. That's, shouting out Yeah, he was there. from high school. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Who was I, knew, I knew there was a connection. Demico Demico Ryan. Ryan's. What is it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Long so, after me, though. You know. <laughs> well, you still look young, Mike. You still look young. Thank yeah. you, bro. It's yeah, no Mike. moisturizer. <laughs> got, yeah, got, yeah, got good skin. He's got good skin. He's doing a really nice job with. Um, and that's why you go. That's why you go shoot your shot with with Nia Long. But I digress. With Nia Long. Uh, let me ask you this. <laughs> let me ask you this, uh, Rodney. Tonight in, in the game, you speaking of these young quarterbacks. Now you've got Chicago and Carolina. Not necessarily a great matchup, but it's interesting because you get to learn how difficult it is. You asked me, do I understand how hard it is uh, to play quarterback in the NFL? I don't, but I think Chicago is finding out, and I think Carolina is finding out too. And you have this matchup tonight. You know, what do you what do you see from both of these quarterbacks? I know Justin Fields is not playing. Uh, they got Tyson Badgett in there, but specifically. Bryce Young, what do you what did you expect to see from him as the number one overall pick? And what have you seen so far? I expected to see exactly what I'm seeing right now. A young kid come in there, show us some things and have us like, wow, OK, he can he, he got it. He can play a little bit, but then come back and throw a couple of interceptions and struggle. That's what I expected. So what Carolina has to do is they got to continue to build around that offensive line. They got to continue to go out and try to get pieces, really good athletic pieces to add. So, you know, receiving core, tight end. Um, I still think they can upgrade at the running back position. They can get a couple more offensive linemen and really help solidify that offensive line. Because when you have a young kid coming in, you know, the defensive coordinators are scheming for them, you know, um, all types of crazy things are happening to him. So you just want to be able to calm his mind, know that he's got playmakers around him, and know that he has protection in front of him. 
Yeah, Bryce is going to be fine, man. Bryce is going to get the job done. I always want to ask you this question because I love the National Football League and watching it. Of course, I loved you as a player. I thought you played the game hard. You played the game the right way, in my opinion. So you did the job because that's what football is all about. These days, and I know they want to keep the players safe. All right, obviously, that, that's rule number one. But has the league, and I'm not saying the players by any means are soft, but has the league gotten softer because of some of these rules right now? Because right now you can't even sneeze on some of the quarterbacks in the NFL. Yeah, absolutely. Because they're paying these quarterbacks a lot of money and guy, and, and and fans come to the games because they want to see the quarterbacks. And mm-hmm. they don't, if anything's questionable, if you're slamming a quarterback, if you put your body weight on him, if you're doing anything like that, they're going to call a penalty. Point blank, period. And I wouldn't say that the league is soft. I just think that the league is being a lot more careful because so many guys are suffering from CTE-related symptoms, concussions, and problems like that. So I think the league understands that when you're done playing and you're 25, 27, 29, 30 years old, that you want to be able to have a, a productive life after football. So it's very important that they cut down on some of these hits, and, and, and at times they're overly sensitive with these hits. But it's the right thing to do. Yeah. Well, let me tell you what. Hey, Rodney Harrison. Rodney Harrison said that. I, I, I'm staying with it then if he says it. <laughs> but listen, listen, Mike, 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 mm-hmm. look, I, okay, this, this is the last thing I'm going to say to Rodney as, as we let him go. You tell you ask if the league is soft. I'll tell you who's not soft because we're looking at the, the beautiful kitchen that Rodney Harrison has going on. So take your focus yeah. off the kitchen. And look at this dude, man. Look at like, I know, what's right? going on. How, like, what the hell? How you staying in shape like this? What's going on, man? What are you doing? What what you what's still, the routine? Just bless us with bless us with like a little tip. Give us a little workout tip. So like Mike Hill and I can, you know, yes. okay. bring it to the gym. Okay, so the key guys is when you're trying to get in great shape, there's certain things that you have to have extreme discipline on. Okay, so one of the things that I've done that's really changed my life is gave up pretty much alcohol. If I drink any alcohol, it's a mimosa. It's a glass of champagne, some Prosecco, like a $12 bottle of Prosecco and a little cranberry or orange juice. That's it. So limit your alcohol intake. Guys, we're over 50. I'm over 50. I'm 50. So I got to walk. I walk every day, 45 minutes every day. It's just calming. It helps anxiety. It just helps me think. And um, just, you know, when I work out, I lift. I don't lift like super heavy. I do 15 to 20 reps of things. And that's about it. Wow. Look at this. He Life killed my dreams when he said cut out alcohol. He killed my dreams when he said cut out alcohol. <laughs> I'm still hungover from last night. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <laughs> like, I, I, it's what's in that refrigerator behind him, though, that counts, man. It's what's not in that refrigerator that counts. <laughs> That's right. And hey, listen, he said no. He said no alcohol. Audience is like, no, I'm turning the channel. I'm turning the channel. I ain't listening. Y'all, to y'all think I, this yeah. is water? I, yeah. <laughs> Rodney Harrison, man. Good to see you, brother. (laughs) Hey, man. Good to see you guys, and thanks for having me. Appreciate y'all. All All right, Rodney. Take care, man. Hey, thank you for watching, brother, from another. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, go ahead and do that now. Don't forget, you can catch us three to four weekdays on PeacockTV.com and on Sirius XM Channel 85.